The veil is a concept that uh, I didn't see for a very long time, and really most people haven't actually seen this idea of a veil between heaven and earth. But I began to discover it when I looked in Revelation chapter 6, and it says that the heavens are going to recede like a scroll. Uh, and Isaiah 34, 4, it says the same thing, that the heavens will recede like a scroll. And I kept thinking, what does that mean? Does this mean that the sun, moon, and stars are going to somehow just shrink right up and they're going to go away? Are they going to get wrapped up in, in what's left, you know? But then I went back and I saw in Scripture in Exodus, excuse me, Ezekiel chapter 1, where he says that he was sitting by the river Hebar in Babylon and he saw the heavens opened and he saw visions of God. So it wasn't that the sun, moon, and stars and the universe suddenly, you know, opened up. It was that there was some kind of a, a membrane, a veil, a force field, if you will, between heaven and earth. Uh, we see this also when Jesus comes up out of the water at his baptism. It says that the heavens were opened and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. And a voice was heard from heaven saying, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Uh, Stephen, when he's being stoned, he saw the heavens opened and he saw Jesus up there. Not, not far away, mind you. And then John, in the book of Revelation, saw the heavens open. Now, at another place, in 2 Kings chapter 6, Elisha and his servant wake up one morning and they find the Syrians have surrounded them. And Elisha's not worried, but his servant is. And Elisha prays, Lord, I pray that you'd open the young man's eyes that he might see. And the Lord does. And then he's able to see horses and chariots of fire all around. Well, that's because his eyes were open. He could finally see through this, this barrier, whatever we want to call it. But I think veil is a good, a good term for that because we have in Isaiah chapter 25, he says, on this mountain, God will uh, swallow up the, the covering that covers all people and the veil that is over all nations. So he's going to take away this veil. Even in Isaiah 64, Isaiah says, Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down. Now the word there, rend, it means literally to break, to tear. Well, how do you tear the heavens? I mean, what does that mean? Uh, again, are we talking where the sun, moon, and stars exist? Is that the thing that we're talking about, tearing? Uh, no, it's not talking about that at all. It's the same thing where the heavens were opened for Ezekiel, where the heavens were opened for Stephen. That is what he's talking about tearing. Now, let's go, by, by way of analogy, let's go to the tabernacle. God told Moses to carefully follow the instructions given him because the tabernacle was a copy of the heavenly tabernacle. So we can now look at the, the earthly tabernacle to get an, a, a very good idea of what the heavenly tabernacle is like. Well, there is an outer gate that separates just, you know, everybody, the animals, everything, the riffraff outside from this now holy place. And then in there you have the altar, you have the, the lavers where they would wash, and then you have the smaller structure, and in there you have the, the holy place, and then you have the most holy place, or the holy of holies. So there's an outer gate, an outer uh, veil, or fence, if you will, or a gate, and then there's an inner gate between the holy place and the holy of holies. So there are these two veils. Now, we see that when Jesus was crucified, the veil, the outer veil, mind you, was actually torn. Not the inner veil, but the outer veil was actually torn from top to bottom. And that's, that is a sign of what is coming, that, this, that there's going to be a restoration uh, of all things. Now, it's been done in the legal sense, but it hasn't been done yet in the practical sense. We still don't dwell with God face to face, but we're going to one day. That's God's desire, is that we would live with Him, we'd be able to walk with Him. When God created Adam and Eve there in the garden, God came walking in the cool of the evening. That seems to be that there was no problem doing that until one day Adam sinned, and then he wanted to cover himself. He wanted to hide because now there was an incompatibility between him and God. There was, there was a problem. He tried to cover himself. And we have to go back to understanding who is God? What, what is he actually like? Uh, well, we talked about him having a form, but more than just having a form, he actually has fire 
and electricity or lightning coming out of him. Uh, we, we see this in so many places. We, we do see it in Ezekiel, that he has fire from his waist up and from his waist down. Daniel talks about this fiery stream that comes out from before him. Isaiah uh, 30, 33 says that the breath of the Lord kindles the, the place known as Tophet. I mean, there's so many places where it talks about this fire coming out of God. God himself says uh, in, in Hebrews that he, our God, is a consuming fire. I mean, it's just, it's all over, you know, that God really is fire. So if, if God is fire, and we obviously are not, then we're incompatible with who God is. I believe that before the fall of Adam and Eve, they were compatible with God, that they had bodies that were able to be in his presence. Think about when Moses went up on top of the mountain, and he says, oh, all right, God, so you, you say we're friends, show me your face. God says, eh, I can't do that, Moses, because nobody can see my face and live. So he does this whole thing of he puts him in the cleft of the rock, and then he passes by, he puts his hand over, and then he passes by, and Moses can just see the, the after part of God. Because to see God's face would be to receive that full blast. It's like walking into a nuclear furnace, a nuclear uh, reactor. You, you can't do it. You just can't do it. You can look at it. Uh, from a TV screen. Uh, maybe you can look at it from a great distance. Well, it's not advisable. But, uh, you know, you need some something to protect you. You want lead between you and the nuclear reactor is what you want. So God is kind of the same way, but he's obviously more powerful than a nuclear reactor. He has this incredible amount of power that is just radiating from his person. And because of the sin problem, he can't hang out with us. Now you might think, well, God is so mean. He's just snobbish and he's too good for us. No, it's not really like that. It's like it's like the boy in the bubble and his father or his parents. You know, there his parents are looking at the boy in the bubble saying, oh, our son, how we want to be with you. We want to go in there. We want to hug you and kiss you and play with you and caress you and, and just do all the things that parents do with their little child. But they know that if they go in the bubble, they will kill their son. And that is really the problem that we have between us and God, that, that we're incompatible with who he is. So we can't go and, and be in his presence. So he's put up a veil. He's put a, a bubble between us. But we're the boy in the bubble, essentially. And God can hardly wait until that bubble can come down. Now you might say, well, he's so powerful, he could just do anything. He could just, you know you know, move his fingers and they would all, well, that doesn't quite work that way. Uh, there, there is a, a system in place and there, there are, uh, I don't want to call them checks and balances, but God is a God of integrity. He's a God of his, his, his word. In fact, he's, he's elevated his word above his name. So whatever he says, he also must do. And Satan and all the fallen angels and the good angels are going to keep him to that. They're going to make sure that he keeps his word. Otherwise, he's not worthy to be God if he's a liar. So he has to go through the, the legal means to undo what Satan got us into, and what Adam and Eve got us into. He had to do that legally. He did that through the cross. Now the day is coming when he can take down that veil, that protective barrier between us. Remember, the protective barrier is not protecting God from us. Sometimes you hear it say, well, God can't allow any sin into his presence. Sure he can. That's not a problem for God. He can allow anything into his presence. But whatever, if that, if that thing is unholy, it's going to melt, right? Uh, it's like saying, well, you can't, you can't put uh, you know, different things into uh, a smelt oven. Sure you can. It's just going to melt away, right? You can take that, that gold ring, and if it has impurities in it, you can put it into the furnace, but it's going to melt. But then when you take it out, it'll be purified. So, sure, you could go into God's presence, but it won't be a very enjoyable experience, let's just say that. And when the, now, so when this veil between heaven and earth comes down, that is when the dimension where God is, where the angels are, and the dimension where we are, let's call them the domain of heaven and the domain of earth, those will become one again. And that's what the Bible is talking about when it says that the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise, when it says that they're going to recede like a scroll. That is that big event. It's the unveiling 
of the Lord Jesus. The book of Revelation is all about the unveiling of the Lord Jesus. Uh, the, the very title is Apocalypsis. It means the unveiling. And, and it's, 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 not, it's not a revelations. It's not plural. It's just one revelation. It's the unveiling of the Lord Jesus Christ. For example, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, it says that when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven, the word revealed there is apocalypsi. It's the verb. It's the same word as apocalypsis, the, the noun of revelation. When the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven in flaming fire, right? there's that fire again. So when the veil between heaven and earth goes down, that's the heavens passing away like a, like a, like a scroll, that is the big moment when the protective force field, let's call it a force field, uh, goes away. Now you may say, oh, I don't believe in force fields and all this stuff. Uh, actually, you do believe in a force field. Uh, we have one surrounding planet Earth. We have a force field surrounding planet Earth, and we're all very grateful for it. If we didn't have this force field around planet Earth, we'd all be dead. Uh, it's called the magnetosphere, and it literally protects us from gamma rays, from uh, solar particles, uh, and other stuff that's coming from outer space, uh, but especially from the solar uh, particles that would bump, bombard the planet and they would kill everything on the Earth if we did not have the magnetosphere. That's a force field. Uh, so that's really what we're talking about. It's some kind of a force field, if we're going to use more of the Trekkie terminology. Uh, you know, you call it a veil, you call it the force field, it doesn't really matter. But that is, again, this field of energy, whatever it may be, I don't know what it looks like. I've never seen it personally. Uh, but think of it like a one-way mirror. Uh, people on that side can see through, but we can't see them. Or think of it like uh, curtains on a stage uh, that, uh, you know, every so often you can open it up and just kind of peek through. That's what the prophets were able to do is that, that it was just open a little bit. They could peek through and they could see, but the veil remained, the curtain remained. And the day that Jesus comes back is the day that that curtain is going to be opened up completely, rolled up like a scroll, and then people on planet Earth are going to say, uh-oh, we're in big trouble. We are no longer atheists. We fully believe that there is a king of kings because there he is. They're going to see him. And I know exactly what they're going to say on that day. I know exactly. Because the Bible has recorded it, they're going to go running to the caves and the clefts of the rock, and they're going to say, hide us and fall on us and hide us from the wrath of the Lamb because the great day of his wrath is coming. Who is able to stand? That is the very moment that the veil between heaven and earth comes down.